What I have here is an Adazer laser. It was provided to me to test and demonstrate. I get a lot of offers to uh, test lasers that is, I'm not going to say it's an off brand, but it's not a well known brand. And I, I get a lot of offers to review some of these uh, different branded lasers, and I generally turn them down. However, I saw the architecture of this one, and this one looked really neat. So I thought, yeah, let's check this one out. So we're going to open this up, get into it, put it together, coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I said, I have the Adazer laser here. We're going to unbox this thing. We're going to put it together and see how well it works. And I, once again, this was provided to me to test and demonstrate. However, any opinions or anything I find on here are going to be my own. So if there's something here that is bad or ugly, I'll point that out. Of course, I'll also point out anything that's good. So let's get this opened up see what we got in this box. box is a little banged up, as you can see there, but hopefully this will be well packed. There won't be anything damaged in it. I have not opened this up at all yet. So as you can see right on top is a stainless steel plate cutting mat. If you're going to be doing some cutting you're going to want to use that and not cut designs in your dining room table. We have a user guide and installation manual and some air assist instructions in several languages. Okay, I see I got a whole bunch of little parts and pieces to take out of here. And you don't need to watch me do that. So I'll get this all unpacked and I'll get it laid out on the table. We'll see what we got. So briefly, here is a kind of a layout of everything I get. You got an air pump, a power supply, you got some very dark safety glasses. Uh, HDMI cable, which will be for the uh, controller, USB cable, of course, power supply, air hose, power cords. These would be the legs. Got a little tiny broom there for cleaning things up, keeping your laser clean. Uh, you get a bag of hardware here, and which I'll get unpacked and sorted out. A uh, little bundle of alien wrenches in there, and a little SD card or flash drive. That's uh, a Looks like the micro SD card with a card reader. And some microfiber cloth, some samples to play with there. And of course your extrusions. And one thing that's nice here is the belts are pre-installed. So you're not going to have to fool around installing belts. I see the limits are pre-mounted. There'll be some wiring to do. I don't foresee this to be anything difficult. So, get all my hardware out, and get some things moved around. I will say that this laser head is massive. This thing's big. It has air assist built in. Laser power 18 to 24 watt. I assume that's the output. So, there, it's essentially a 20 watt laser output. But we'll get to that there later, of course. So, get everything set up here, we'll get putting this together. Now your first step is going to be putting the frame together, and I have the pieces laid out here as they go. Um, your stepper motor end will go down here towards your controller. And on the other end, you'll see one of them has a uh, sprocket here with a hole in it, where you got a nut on this end, adjustment nut over here. You're going to want this in towards the controller side. So it will go together, something like that. And you have M4 by 12 screws. And they do give you some uh, L-handle wrenches you can use. I prefer to use my ball drivers. It's quicker. These are handy to have for putting your hardware in, keeping track of it so things don't roll around. So it's just a matter of uh, putting screws into the corners here. It's a nice heavy extrusion. Okay, right off, there's a wire here you're going to have to watch for. 
on this front corner. This will be plugging into the stepper motor. As you're putting this together, make sure that you do not get this wire pinched into something. There's also a little antenna in here for Wi-Fi. You're going to want to be careful you don't damage that. So again, making sure you don't pinch that wire in there. I'm going to hold it out of the way with my finger. And this will go together like so. we got a screw that goes in the top here. Normally I wouldn't tighten these up ahead of time, but this is a very, very tight fitting extrusion. Now you'll have two on the end down here. One there and one there. Repeat the same on the other end. You'll have one on the top and two on the end. And these do fit tight. And they self-square when you put them together. Nice feature. And just for clarity here, I'm going to flip this around that so I can get a hold of the other part easily. Again, the part with the hole in it will go towards the end where the controller is because there is a rod that needs to go in there. So we get our ends lined up here. And when you're putting your screws here on the end, you're going to want to go in this hole, this hole, and this hole. This hole over here is not for the, this mounting. And this hole here is going to be for your belt tensioning. Yeah, that's actually, that's a very sturdy architecture there. No flopping or wobbling or racking or anything. Your bags are labeled here. Now, of course, we just did step one, this is step two. These will be the uh, belt tension adjustment screws. Okay, these will go in the end down here where it says Adizer on the extrusion. This hole right here, get that screw started in there. But you don't want to tighten that down yet because you're going to have to set your belt tension. To set the belt tension, you would loosen this screw right here on the side. Then, turn this screw to where you get the belt tight. And you, you don't want it like a rubber band, but you don't want a floppy either. You want a little bit of give in it, but not a lot. It's looking pretty good. It's hard to describe that. It's kind of a subjective thing. You certainly don't want it slipping, but you don't want it so hard that it's hard to move the carriage. So you should be able to move this carriage fairly easily. Like so. And then once that's done, you can tighten this screw here back up on the side. And I'll do the same thing on that end. Get the screw started here. Now we'll loosen up the nut on the back. This, I should say the screw. Now right now that belt's real floppy in there. So I will tighten this up. Take all that floppiness out of there. Right about there. And tighten that screw back up. I may have jumped ahead in, with what the manual may say, but since we were right there, might as well get her done. And now we have the y-axis. That's this guy right here. And you will want to set this with this bracket right here facing the controller, which I have it at that end right now to make this easy. And a good way to make sure you're getting everything square is to pull this all the way down to the end. These carriages. It'll make it a whole lot easier to get your screws down in there, get everything lined up. Step three, M5 by 58. It's a 3M and M alien wrench if you're keeping track there. Here I'm not going to snug these up until I've got everything started. And once everything's in place, snug them down. 
And next here, mark step four, you'll be mounting the feet on this. These are M5 by 6. And I got feet laying here somewhere. Here they are. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Little step there you'll see where the extrusion steps. And it just sets right in place like that. I like this how well machined everything is here because everything is just fitting right together. Not having to fool around and trying to line anything up. Everything just seems to fit. I like it that way. Okay, while we're at this end, this is where the rod comes in. And I did not notice this earlier, but there is actually a hole in the end for slipping this through this little sprocket, except I need to loosen up the set screw on that first to allow that rod to slide through there. On this end here, there's a split coupling, and it'll have a uh, couple of set screws in it. So you want to slip this rod in there. And tighten this set screw down. Some people call them grub screws. Then you'll need to tighten that set screw down over here as well. This two and a half M and M's on this end, in case you were wondering, and it's uh, something much smaller at the other end. Whatever little one they gave you there. Okay, get this. Uh, well, they give you the laser to mount next. I have this upside down. It'd be easier to do the wiring here. Flip this up on the end so you can see what I'm doing. It's a limit switch right here little two pin connector goes into that. Not a whole lot of wiring on this. It's pretty simple. A lot of it's pre-done for you. That's keyed so that only goes in one way. This here is a stepper motor plug. It's also keyed. only goes in one way. Come out the laser module. A little knob on the back here. You loosen up. This slides into a dovetailed keyway. And I'm not going to set any particular depth yet. And you tighten this knob back up. And that holds it in place. It has a little kickstand for your focusing. That's going to be nice. I wish everybody would do that. Okay, next a little bit of cable management. They give you these little cable tie sticky back thingies. I don't know how long they'll stay stuck, but we're going to do our best. I'll clean this with alcohol first here. And by alcohol, I mean an alcohol pad, not my good rum. So these will just stick on there like so. And then the cable kind of wiggles its way through there, running down the line. Interesting to see how this exactly works out. So we'll get a little alcohol pad here. We'll clean this up good, make sure there's no oil or anything on it. And there was, so I'm glad I did that. And then the cable just kind of zigzags its way through it. Clips there. In the neighborhood with it all upside down, you'll have your stepper motor cable and you'll have your lemon switch cable right here. You need to plug those in. Again, these are keyed. When they go in one way, don't force it. And then this will pass up through the front because we'll have to go up on top, put some cable holders up there. And I may need to move that back a little while. Well, we'll see. We'll get the back of this cleaned up. Okay, then your end pin out here, a little four pin, that will plug into the laser. And that again, again, it's keyed, only goes in one way. You may need to take something small to push down on that to get it plugged in all the way. That's a pretty tight fit in there. You're not going to get your finger in there. Make sure you've got good travel all the way to the end here. And travel back. I'll do a little rearranging on that. Checking the eccentrics here. Um, they don't need to be adjusted. There is a slot here where you can move this down to get to the eccentric nut. They do give you a little wrench. 
if you've got some flop and it's too loose, but that's been preset by the factory, so we're good there. While I'm fooling around here with cable management, I'm going to do the uh, airline for the air assist. And the silicone tube here. And that will just pop right into the top there. This will follow around and I'm, hopefully it will fit in with the cable. It does. That's good. Well, you're not going to be able to share it down here by where the stepper motor is because it's going to kink the hose. I'm going to need to tie these together a little bit somehow, the tether. They do give you some cable ties. When you're tying these together, don't squeeze them down real tight, you'll collapse your hose. That's pretty good there. I could trim them off later. You know, don't know where I'm going to put my air pump yet, exactly. Here at the controller, there's a little cable tie there you need to cut off. Then to release the emergency stop, or to engage it, you would just push down and release it. Just give it a little quarter turn, eighth turn there, and it pops up. Okay, they do supply it with some spare parts, and they're marked spare parts and spare parts. So you got some spare screws, a spare belt. And there's a couple spare screws from uh, the other part of the assembly. Okay, for the controller here, you got this thing. Looks like an HDMI cable. You got your controller, little protective plastic thing in the front. You can peel off and somehow figure out how to open up this package. cable there. There's a port right on the side of the controller. It's right here. One end of that cable plugs in there. The other end will plug into your control screen. And this should be magnetic here. Hey, look at that. Okay, we got a few things to hook up here like the air assist here. And of course the power supply. Move this down out of the way a little bit. The power supply here. Power cord. This is a cord for the... Uh, oh, I see how this works. This is a Y splitter. So, your power supply coming off your power brick here would plug into that. Then this branches off and one goes to the controller and one goes to your air assist. Like so. And then your air assist hose. Of course, goes on the airport. Airport! No, not where the planes land. There's a port on the front of the air assist right there. That just plugs in. There's a controller here to turn this on off and adjust your air amount. We'll see how loud that is here in a little bit because some of these air pumps are really loud and they walk all over the place. Hopefully that won't be one of them. So we'll get some... This here straightened out. Well, it powers up and comes on. Well, you definitely have to have the SD card in there. Use this. Machine size is 430 millimeter by 430 millimeter. That's your work area. You can choose your language here. Of course, we're in English. So I have to get a laptop set up over here. Get some software loaded. This moved, so I got room for my laptop. Oh, it's good to have cardboard under a laser. Yeah, I started a fire that way once. At least I was right here when I did it. Well, we'll put something better under there. Okay, to focus this, you got this little kickstand right here that drops down. Loosen your knob on the back until that touches the material. Tighten your knob back up. Put your kickstand back up. You're ready to engrave. I'm going to put this out here in the center somewhere. 
This is just a scrap of uh, hardboard with some white paint on it. That's what we're going to do a little test engrave on. Okay, and I'm also going to turn on the air assist. Find out how loud that is. You know, that hums along there pretty good, but I don't, if you have your air assist on, it'll help keep your laser lines clean. So all I need to do here is hit start. Okay, so there's our little test graphic there, the test word. And of course, everybody wants to see how well one of these is going to cut. So I will remove this. And I've got a little portable tiny honeycomb bed. Those are neat. Handy for little bitty small projects. I'll get a little piece of wood here. Okay, so here's our graphic and I'm going to turn this air pump off. Because although it does not walk around, it's loud. It does put out a good air, air stream. So here's our graphic here. Knock the pieces out. The reason I chose this particular one was because of the extremely fine things that have to come out of it. Got to get them knocked out of there. Take a pencil and poke them out. If you're ever making something small like this, you've got little bitty things like that. You just take a pencil and pop them out of there. But you can see how well this cuts. Does a very good job with those fine graphics, especially around the fine edges like right up here. So I'm impressed with this. So there's assembly and startup of this Adasur 20 watt laser. Uh, my first impressions is it's well constructed. The architecture of this is, is fantastic. There's no racking to it. Everything lines right up. Um, the only thing I don't really like about it is the noise that this air assist pump makes. But I have other ones that are just as loud. But at least this one doesn't walk around the table. Some of them I have, you have to actually block them against something or the walk right off the table. So it does sit still, but it's a little noisy. Uh, as far as the, from what I've done here so far, this is, you know, the initial startup. The engraving was fine. The, the cutting was fine on the second try because the first try, some dummy bumped their elbow on that switch right there and it shut everything off. And it's not something you re can recover from. But so far, I like it. And being a 20 watt, it's going to be ideal for cutting. We have quite a few uh, projects we make that we do cutting on, particularly coaster holders. We, we make a lot of those. And that's what this one is going to be dedicated to. I'll be uh, making another video here of a, a baseboard, a uh, layout grid, uh, possibly some risers. Uh, don't know necessarily I'll need risers if I'm going to dedicate this for cutting. I will put a dedicated honeycomb bed underneath it. So again, this was provided to me by Adasur to test and demonstrate. This is here is just round one. There'll be more videos on this coming up. If you're interested in one of these or like to get one, there'll be a link in the description. I'm Roger in the shop. Appreciate getting a thumbs up if you like this. See you in the next one.